So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Christian LeBlanc, and for those of you who don't know, I make almost daily travel videos, and so uh, generally my girlfriend and I, Laura's back there, hi camera woman, we like to travel to tropical places, sometimes we come to Estonia. Uh, yeah, we're typically in Southeast Asia somewhere, and what we do is we make videos that are about 8 to 12 minutes long, and they kind of share the adventure of traveling. So it, it works with narration, which I do with that little camera there. I kind of talk to the camera, explain what we're up to, explain how much things cost. And then I also work with other cameras to make things kind of cinematic and beautiful. And uh, I like to use my drone because it gives that really unique aerial perspective that you can't get any other way. And so uh, that's kind of how the production works. And today I'm gonna be kind of focusing on how I've been able to take that production and turn it into a profitable business that allows us to continue to travel and, and earn money doing it. Now, if you want to make money doing social media, of course, you're gonna need something first, and that is a following, an audience. And so the question is, how do you get that audience? If you don't already have the audience, there's a few things you're gonna to need to do. And so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna build a brand. Why are people watching your content? What are they coming to your channel for? What are you satisfying? So everyone has a need, and when they go onto YouTube, they have a need that they're looking to have satisfied. When people watch my videos, I like to think that the needs they have is maybe they're working nine to five and they don't exactly have the flexibility to be out in Southeast Asia. So they watch my videos and they feel like for 10 minutes of their day, they were able to enjoy a sunny beach. Maybe they're just looking to kill some time and they're looking to be entertained. Well, that's why I like to keep my videos quite lighthearted and funny and I don't like to focus on negative things. I like to just be that entertaining thing for them. And so there's all sorts of different reasons people can come to you for entertainment or to watch you. You just need to figure out what is gonna be the thing you bring to the table. Post a lot. Now, I say post a lot and I really mean it. Like, there, it, it's a really tough situation on social media where there is a thousand other channels trying to you know, get your attention. And it's really hard to grow an audience because of that. And I think it's getting harder every single day. But the more you post, the more you give yourself the chance that you'll find that, that network, that niche that you're looking for. You'll build that audience. People will get to know you because you posted more, and so they feel like they can relate to you or they understand you. And that's really important in getting those dedicated fans. It's more important to have a thousand dedicated fans than a hundred thousand subscribers who don't even know why they hit the, sub the subscribe button. Um, and also because you never know when that viral video is gonna occur. On Facebook in particular, it's like, it's such a, Russian roulette game. You know, sometimes the video just does crap and you don't know why, and then sometimes you post a really basic video, it just blows up and you're like, okay. Uh, YouTube is a bit less volatile, but still, it, it applies to everything. And uh, it's ultimately in posting a lot that people will grow to, to uh, be able to grow closer to you. My third point in basically building that audience is build a community, respond to comments. You know, for me, one of the cool things I've done that I don't see any other YouTube channel doing is I do a fan of the day. So for those people who watch the entire video, there's like a last little 15 second portion. It's like a five second portion where I say fan of the day and it shows someone's name. And for someone who's been watching the channel every single day for like three months, they see their name there and they feel like, oh wow, he noticed me. You know, it's really cool for them to see that I actually do read all the comments. And I do appreciate those people who really take the initiative to engage with the content. So I think it's important that you build that community. There's different ways you can do it. I've done giveaways is a cool way to do it to really show again the appreciation you have for your audience. So now I'm gonna talk about how to actually make money because yeah, like those are the three main things I would say to building your audience. But now let's assume that you've got the audience and you wanna know how to make money. So if I were to focus on YouTube, YouTube is my platform that I consider to be integral to what I do. Everything else is kind of a byproduct. I take the shortened versions of my YouTubes and put them on Facebook. I take the photos that I got from the day I was filming for YouTube and put it on Instagram. So everything's kind of revolving around YouTube for me. And one of the main reasons is because YouTube actually pays me. Uh, Facebook just hoards all the money for themselves. They don't share anything. So for that reason, people kind of hate Facebook, but they keep posting there, including myself. Um, <laughs> you never know. They keep saying, we're going to bring monetization. We're going to bring monetization. They haven't done it yet. But anyways, um, YouTube actually pays me. I earn 60% of revenue earned on my channel. So whenever you see that little 30 second ad, the 15 second ad, the one that's like, you know, wait five seconds to skip. And then if you click that skip button, that creator earns a bit less money. So apparently if you like leave the ad on, it will like mean more money. So, you know, leave it on. <laughs> uh, 
And then also those little pop-up ads. So yeah, you get 60% of the ad revenue earned on that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you like a really vague figure of how much maybe a million views is worth, and it will totally differ from creator to creator. A million views, probably gonna be worth about 1. Uh, 1.5 thousand US dollars. So you would think a million views would be worth a lot more. It's, it's worth, you know, it adds up, but it's a million views. <laughs> so it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's an, a fair amount, but here's the thing. Your YouTube is, in, is a bidding space. So my ad that ran before my video, if it was watched by a Filipino viewer, it might be worth uh, you know, a fraction of a penny. If it was watched by an American viewer, it's worth about two cents to me. So I did the math on it, an American view worth about 12 Filipino views. So you have to ask yourself, who's their audience? Who's watching them? You know, is it people from Southeast Asia or is it people from North America? And um, for myself, I have a fairly global audience, so my ad revenue would be different than someone who entirely focuses on, some, on the North American audience. Um, yeah, so that's how ad revenue works, and uh, it's nice. It's direct deposit into your bank account at the end of every month, and it brings kind of like a certainty into your income. You know you're going to earn a base revenue as long as your views don't go up and down too much. Um, another thing is brand deals. So working with companies, uh, I've worked with Google just recently. They sent me their new phone. And it's a really awesome opportunity for YouTubers because marketers are now realizing that you know putting a 30 second ad on TV is not as effective as having an influencer actually use the product. The reason being, you don't know that 30 second ad on TV. You don't know the people in the ad. You just, it's just in front of your face. If I use it and you've been watching me for three months now and you've come to know my humor, my way of talking, you feel comfortable. And so that ad means so much more to you when it's like, oh, this person's actually using it. Now I'm, you have my attention. And so uh, you can earn better income working with brands than you will ever earn with your ad revenue if you are brand friendly. I, the ways you can get brand deals vary. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I'm just so busy these days that I don't actively reach out to brands anymore. But when I started and when I was a beginner, I would, I would reach out to companies. That's how I got uh, the camera Laura's using right now sponsored to me because I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I can do for you. And they, they have been so awesome. I've been partnered with Panasonic. They give me free gear. I give them exposure. And it's one of those relationships where they're not paying me, but they're keeping my costs low and we're helping each other out. So when you're a starting influencer, you're not always gonna get paid, but what you can get is free stuff. Laura and I get tens of thousands of dollars in hotel stays all around the world just because we can give them you know, uh, social media reach in exchange for free stays. And so we've stayed in some places that I would have never dreamed of staying in. It was just like amazing. Like every time you go in there, your jaw just drops and you're like, how on earth are we doing this right now? And so that's like the coolest thing for me. I love free shit and we get lots of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the way you're going to get paid the most is generally going to be by having the brands come to you because they're the, when they contact you, you know that they have their marketing budgets all set up. They know exactly how much they have to spend and it gives you kind of the negotiation position. You're like, oh, you've come to me. Now here are my terms. Um, and what else can be said on that topic? Yeah, brand deals totally vary. They can be anything from, you know, simply having the, the tag down below in your description and giving a 15 second, uh, 15 second mention to the product. Or for like something what Laura and I are looking to do is working with tourism boards where it's like such a natural fit. You know, let's come visit your country for a week or for a month and you pay us per video and we would be doing this anyways. Like that's the kind of stuff where you need to find the product fits that work well and they're out there, they really are. Um, okay, another way you can make money, affiliate linking. And so this is something I've done quite recently and I did a video. Whoa, lit. I use the Panasonic GH4. It shoots amazing 4K quality. Here's a video I did where I showed off all my camera gear and explained exactly why it works so well for me as a traveler. And um, that video did really well. Um, down below here, you'll see, is it big enough? Yep. All these things, every piece of equipment I talked about, I have linked through Amazon. Now Amazon's awesome because you can set up a partner account with them in like 15 minutes and you search the product, you get this custom URL, the little blue thing there, 
And if someone clicks on that, that URL, they're brought to Amazon for that product. But the thing is, they don't even have to buy the product. Anything they buy on Amazon within 24 hours, you will earn a certain percentage of. So I've earned money on someone buying dog food. I don't know why they bought dog food, but hey, buy, buy as much as you want, you know? So um, these links are pretty cool. I've, especially when the video did well, the earnings went way up. Now when the video plateaued a little bit, wasn't getting as many views, um, I did passively include them in most of my videos. I haven't been doing it recently. I might do it again, I don't know. But I'm noticing now that we're getting close to the Christmas season, the earnings are going back up again because people are spending more money. And same with my AdSense. My AdSense goes up because people are bidding more to use ads leading up to Christmas. So November, December, really good months for AdSense. Um, yeah, so these are really cool. And um, to give you an idea, I mean, you make a beginning 6% on anything sold. So again, dog food, or if they bought the actual camera I linked, it doesn't matter, I get 6%. But the more equipment you sell, the more it goes up, and it goes all the way up to uh, 10%, which I've not hit before, but I mean, I've been as high as 8 or 9%. When that video blew up, I sold like, I don't know, 50 to 100, 75 grand worth of equipment on that one video. So it was a nice little paycheck. And, um, okay, video photo licensing, okay. so. This is another way you can make money, and this doesn't have to be a YouTuber or anything, but anyone who has a camera and you're shooting nice stuff, keep your eyes open. There's different ways you can sell your content, and I'm still working on this. I'd say I'm in the very much beginner stage of figuring out how to monetize my content in that sense, but I've had companies contact me saying, hey, we want this one drone shot, you know, and then my, uh, I, I talk to them, I, I license it to them for two years for X amount of dollars and now they use it on their website. Uh, another time I found someone using my photo on their packaging, I didn't license it to them, so then I made a lot more money through basically saying, you either pay me this or we're going to court. So there's a lot of value in photo and video content. Recently Google contacted me uh, for, I don't even know if I can say this, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this photo here. <laughs> so yeah. Um, my fifth and last point is uh, building out verticals. So there's all sorts of opportunities that come with having a YouTube, Instagram, whatever social media following you've built. You can leverage that into so many different ways. I mean, uh, I'm not going to talk about what I'm working on right now, but I've got a few things because what happens if my YouTube dries up? You know, I need to build other sources of revenue for when there's a rainy day on YouTube. And, YouTube's changing its algorithms right now. Everyone's freaking out a lot. If you are in this scene, you would know that. And uh, I'm lucky I'm not dying over it, but my friends, I've seen a lot of views drop and it's tough for them. Um, but yeah, where was I before getting mad at YouTube? Um, this right here. Okay, so building out a vertical. So this is coming soon for me. Get merch, wear merch. You can buy merchandise from my website. So I'm gonna have t-shirts, sweaters, uh, there's other products that I'm currently working on that hopefully will be out in the next, I don't know, quarter or something. But t-shirts, I want to get, I'm really pushing to get that out for Christmas. So you're in luck, guys. <laughs> you can be the first customer, so you're welcome. Other verticals, uh, I mean, I do travel content. So naturally, it's like, how can you use that information and that knowledge and create other businesses? Well, maybe a travel company or like a travel recommendation website. There's all ideas that I'm working on. The only problem is the limited amount of hours in a day. Uh, actually, I forgot to bring up, that was number six, thank you. <laughs> there it is. This is called Patreon. So just as he mentioned before, this is a way that um, you can basically tap into your audience. So if you have a really dedicated audience and they want to actually financially back you, Patreon is a great resource for that. So you could basically tell your audience, hey, uh, I'm a travel video maker, um, you know, I'm just in my beginning stages, and people understand that. You're probably not making any money when you start. But if they really enjoy seeing your content, then maybe they're willing to actually pay a fixed amount per month or per video. They can decide how they set it up. But it's a great way for small influencers, or even big ones, there's some massive influencers that use it, and it allows them to get funded crowdfunded by their audience. So Patreon, also a very cool thing. Uh, Patreon only takes like three to 5% of the actual amount that the viewer gives you. So yeah, you walk away with quite a bit if you can get your audience to do it. I must say, I have used Patreon, staying in luxury accommodations and 
than asking people if they want to donate to you, this is people <laughs> off. <laughs> people saw the free accommodations we received as us being wealthy, and so it can be very easily misinterpreted. It's a very touchy subject, but Patreon definitely can work for people. But yeah, that's kind of like how an influencer can make money. I mean, if you guys have any questions, I wanted to end it a bit early so that we can just chat and you guys can ask questions, because I know there's a lot of like, you know, uncertainty about social media. A lot of people don't even realize that it is a viable career. So if you guys have any questions, it doesn't have to be about money, it can be about anything, that's it. Uh, how much do you use paid media to advertise your... Uh... Okay, um, so I just ran a $500 campaign with uh, an Instagram ad, and it's interesting because I'd never done it before. Uh, Google paid for it, again, I don't know if I can say it, but whatever. <laughs> they gave me the money and they're like, take this video you created for us and promote it on Instagram. And it's, it's unique. I, I don't know how well it's working um, because it's, there's so many variables. So it's like, okay, I grew X amount today, but was it because of this or because of this? And so it's hard to say um, whether it's working well. I also have done paid posts on Facebook, like actually quite regularly, um, because I feel like Facebook is such a twat that if you don't pay it, it'll <laughs> screw you over. And so I like give it like three, four dollars or like maybe ten dollars for a post. And then it like does pretty well sometimes, and so I'm like, okay, I keep paying it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and I've never done a YouTube, I've never done a YouTube app, but uh, I'm definitely open to it. And brands, sometimes that's a really cool way to collaborate with brands, is like, because you're doing work for them, and their job is, they want from you to reach as many people, it's in their um, interest to give you money to also promote your video. And so I've got a friend who, he got paid lots of money for this video, but then they said, here, take uh, $50,000 and promote that video. And so now that video has like a million views, whereas it would have had maybe 50,000 views. Well, his channel is reaching those extra 950,000 people on someone else's dollar. So it's really advantageous to try to get brands who want to actually pay to boost your post. Yeah? What about music? Because you don't have really good music. How do you get it? Uh, okay, so I get asked that a lot. Um, there's different ways. I wanted to ask, uh, can you say what are the most important sort of character traits you need to have to be a successful YouTuber? You mentioned being a good salesman, the technical uh, parts of making good videos, being sociable. What do you feel have been like your best strengths? Uh, okay, my best strengths are that I'm, I think it's like that I just like filming everything, so I'm like obsessive. I just like can't really let a moment slide by without it being captured. And so uh, that, as well as just being curious, I really like going to a new place, like being in Estonia and just being like, what do they do? Like, what do they eat? What do they like? You know, and so for me, like, that's been a strong point. People enjoy that natural curiosity because they feel like they're there traveling with me. But to go back to your previous point of like, what do you need to have to be uh, an influencer is absolutely nothing. Like, there's nothing that makes you the perfect fit. Yeah, some people have an advantage. I mean, I think being charismatic uh, is something that helps you. But there's people who have found ways to be extremely successful and have none of those things, you know? They're not charismatic, they're extremely shy, they don't even like their face on the camera. There's some people who, I, there's one channel where this guy literally gets millions of views and all he does is he says how to ride a bike and then he'll, it'll look like it's a how to ride a bike video and then all of a sudden he'll start throwing eggs at the bike and just like start <laughs> crushing eggs and it gets millions of views and he does it for everything. How to make sushi and he just crushes eggs and he's making hundreds of thousands of dollars and it's like, was he, was he smart? I don't know. Was he sociable? Not really. Like, he just found a niche and he really like worked on that which is cool, yeah. So not, like, it's, it's such a cool space in that sense that anyone can be on it. They just need to figure out what works well for them and they need to figure out if there's an audience in that, and there almost always is. Do you think a content creator needs minimum, minimum, minimum capital to start out on YouTube or Instagram? Yeah, like you can definitely start with like just a phone now. Like, I mean, with phones now shooting such amazing video, you could invest in a phone, and well, maybe you already have the phone, so you don't have to invest. Mm -hmm. You just invest in nothing or a gimbal. Now there's gimbals that stabilize your phone and like just like that you're running with a really nice looking video production. And so as long as you're able to tell your story, it doesn't really matter what you're telling your story with because uh, the story always trumps everything else. May I ask how you end up, ended up in Estonia? Yeah, um, so I got contacted by startup like eight months ago and this is right pretty close to when I quit my job. I had like very little on the go. I was like, okay, sweet, this sounds really cool. I've never 
uh, thought of going to Estonia. I barely know where it is. And it'll be a really great opportunity to see somewhere I wouldn't have seen otherwise. How do you choose which brands to endorse? Uh, it generally has to be a good fit. I mean, if it's, if it's a really good pay, everyone's going like, to consider it, even if it's not the best fit. So I got contacted by a glasses company the other day, Lens Crafters, and I'm like, okay, I don't wear glasses, but we can make this work. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, you know, it depends. Like, at the end of the day, like, I need to cover my expenses too, and so, and so does everyone else who's doing YouTube. So they'll definitely entertain anything, but when it's a natural fit, like, for example, when Google sent me their cell phone, that was awesome. I, I mean, I, I need a good camera to film my vlog, and so it was a really natural fit. It was a decent budget, and it just worked naturally. Um, at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, you only have so much ad space. If you saturate your channels with ads, you're gonna lose your audience. You're gonna lose that credibility respect you have on the social media platforms, because no one wants to be sold stuff every 10 seconds. So it's like, every time you choose an ad, think of it as a cost to you as well. It's not just, oh, it's free to me to promote a product. And that's also something I like, I, I wish that other companies and brands knew when they contacted me, that it's not free for me to promote your product. You're actually costing me a spot that I could have advertised something else, or it's costing me my brand reputation. So, yeah. Do you have a rule for your ad? And uh, I probably have one sponsored post per month, maybe. Okay. Yeah. So I'd rather get the good ones rather than take quantity over quality. And I think it works better that way too. Yeah. How yeah. large is your team? And then how long do you spend editing? Uh, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Laura helps me definitely a lot. Like she's really great with the with the camera and she's also a very talented editor. So uh, she's a lot of the shots, whenever I do, you know, end up in the cinematic roles or because I, I film myself, but if I'm in like a sequence, it's Laura that's filming. Um, so she's really good and we work well as a team in, in helping each other. Because, uh, yeah, and then to edit a video takes probably anywhere from, at the very lowest, it keeps getting more and more time, which sucks, because I keep getting more, you know, into it, and like, oh, I, I'm going to add color grading, and now I'm going to add more transitions, and it's just more and more time, and it's hard to move backwards once you've kind of developed a certain standard. So it used to be like, okay, I could cut my videos out, my old school ones, in like an hour and ten minutes you know, just over an hour. Now it's like, okay, three hours is like a short one. And so it gets, yeah, it gets really time consuming. Because you said you have someone handling your email. Yeah. He, um, he handles, um, I see every email that comes in, but he actually is the one that will initiate the conversation. He'll set up calls, Skype calls, whatever. Because uh, unfortunately, I just don't have the time to keep up with that anymore. But it's a good system if you can find someone that you work well with, and definitely. What impact has YouTube had on your relationship? Wow. <laughs> you know what? It's that's a really good question because there's a lot of YouTubers who have done videos with like, oh my gosh, YouTube's killed our relationship, and it definitely put, can put strains on relationships because you know, if, if let's say I was at home and we just wanted to watch a movie, but I'm like, oh, I didn't film enough today. I need to go do something that's vlog worthy. You know, that's stress on the relationship. Or if Laura wakes up and she's not feeling that beautiful that day, and I'm like, Laura, what's up? And she's like, I have a pimple on my face. These are real events. <laughs> you know, it, it introduces stress. And so you just need to find like boundaries, I guess. And I think the best thing that I did was recently I said I'm not doing daily vlogging because I want to be able to be at home and sit on the couch and decide that today's not going to be a video. I just don't want to put a video out. So that's been really good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a good question. I'm really OCD, so I don't like sit thing sit down for long, anyways. So like for me, I was at a beach when I was younger, and I just got bored real quick, anyway. So I needed something to do. For me, it's perfect. It's like I'd way rather be flying my drone on the beach than sitting on it. So uh, my enjoyment almost sometimes comes more from editing the video, which is really weird to say. But I like I love rewatching that sunset where I've like thrown together the colors and like. Yeah, sometimes I enjoy things in a weird way. <laughs> but I do enjoy being there too, being in the, the present moment. Sometimes you just gotta put the camera down and just appreciate things. Yeah? Do you think about the long, the, do you think about the long future? Um, 
Just, no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a perfect concept. Yeah, same reason I quit my job. It's like, it'll work out. <laughs> if you guys want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll be here and we'll hang out. <laughs> I'm at, hey, sorry, I forgot my camera. Uh, okay.